Today I'm going to teach you how to perform the teddy bear haircut on a cute and fluffy dog. A teddy bear trim is the most preferred haircut that is often given to most mixed breed dogs as well as purebred dogs to give them a cute fluffy appearance that is similar to that of a teddy bear. The haircut involves cutting the dog's fur to a uniform length all over the body, including the face, the legs, and the tail, and rounding off the edges to create a soft, plush look. The fur may also be trimmed around the face to give the dog more defined facial features, such as eyebrows and a muzzle. In addition to making the dog look cute and cuddly, the teddy bear trim can also be easier to maintain than longer haircuts, as it often requires less grooming and brushing. Some people refer to the teddy bear trim as a puppy cut or a lamb cut. In this video tutorial, you will learn the exact grooming methods to execute the teddy bear trim, and you might consider this haircut for your purebred dog. It gives them a cute, playful appearance that is suitable for a variety of occasions and settings. If you want to give your purebred or mixed breed a new look, the teddy bear trim is definitely worth considering. Let me show you how it's done. It starts with the coat being thoroughly cleaned, conditioned, and completely free of mats. I'll be using a half inch guard comb, number one size, made by Wall, over a number 30 blade. And I'm using my Wall KM10 corded clipper. One of the nice things about choosing the teddy bear trim is that you can adjust the length. If you want your dog's length to be longer than a half inch, you can go with a three quarter or a five eighth. You have that flexibility with this choice of trim. So for our first step of the teddy bear trim, we are going to perform all clipper work. So I am going to perform all the clipper work on Sweet Tea's body and legs because I'm using a half inch for that. I will be switching to a larger guard comb on the head and we'll get there in a minute. Our clipper work is going to be performed with the lay of the coat. The lay of the coat is the direction the coat falls naturally. So you will go over your dog's entire body starting behind the head at the occiput, down the chest, the throat, the legs, all done with your body blade of choice which we are using a half inch guard comb in this situation. When performing your clipper work, I want you to make about three passes over an area, but not over and over again. I want you to make a pass, make another pass beside that, make another pass with your clipper beside that, and then go back over that area just as you just did about three times to produce smooth clipper work. And I really want you to pay attention to what my other hand is always doing when I'm performing clipper work or scissor work. My other hand is kind of allowing me to position the dog, stretch out the dog in order to get good results with my clipper work. And you'll need to apply enough pressure on your clipper blade to roll the skin and coat in front of the cutting area. At times you'll need to position your dog in kind of weird positions, but as long as you consider their comfort, it will be fine for your dog. So you need to position them in different ways in order to perform the work you need to perform. There are areas on your dog where their skin is very loose, like around the flank here, and also in their armpits, in front of the earlobes. They have some loose skin, so you need to be cautious of those areas because clippers can injure a dog slightly if you're not careful. Now I'm sure at this point in the video you are saying yes I struggle with legs and feet especially with clipper work and scissor work. I got you covered in this video. Take your time in those areas but definitely watch what my other hand is doing. My other hand is helping me position the dog so that I can get nice clipper work results especially on those legs, those feet. Those areas people struggle with that. I get it. I did too. But I got to tell you the best way to overcome those areas that you struggle with is definitely to continue on. You'll improve with every groom. Trust me you'll learn something with every grooming session that you perform. I definitely left a lot of clipper work in this demo for you guys just to watch it. I learned best by watching. So I left a lot of clipper work in this demo for you so that you can watch me. You can watch what I'm doing in those troubled areas that you're struggling with because I struggled with those areas too. If you have to re-watch a lot of this footage, it's here for you. I didn't cut a lot of it out because I wanted you to see it. I created a playlist on my channel called Puppy Grooming Basics for the Beginner. This would be a great playlist for you to binge watch. I'm following this little toy schnauzer puppy through her lifetime of grooming starting from the very first groom. And I encourage you to subscribe to this YouTube channel Go Groomer because I create content like this for you all the time. 
Oh, and maybe smash the like button? Okay, back to Sweet Tea. So notice I'm lifting her ears out of the way. Sometimes you want to tilt their nose down a little so that you can get a nice smooth clip down the back of the neck, behind the ears, and in the throat area. Under the chin, we're going to feel where your dog's jawbone is so that we're just following the clipper work along the dog's jawbone, tilting your dog's nose up. And we're going to come up with that half inch blade all the way up the underside of her jaw. And holding the ears out of the way, we can tidy everything up there behind the ear too. We're switching over to a 5 8 to do the top skull, but it's time to unpack the blade. I get a lot of emails, people saying, my blade just isn't going through the coat right. If you clean it and you oil it and you're still having problems, as you're clipping along, especially a soft, fine coat like Sweet Tea has, the little particles are going to get packed in your blade, so you need to unpack them so that the cutting edge can make proper contact. And now we're switching over to that 5 8 inch guard comb and we're going to set the top skull. Everything on top of Sweet Tea's head from top of the ear to the top of the other ear. That's called the dome. Now I'm switching to a 4-in-1 clipper. I want it set to a 10, so that's one click up. We're going to trim the sanitary area, which is her private area and her anus and the pads of feet. I'm going to come up to about as far as where her belly button is, should be there, somewhere around there. Make one, one little pass like that. This is going to help keep them from getting matted there. It's also going to keep them clean when they go potty, especially if they're a boy. So then we're going to hike this little leg up. I'm going to go gently towards the vulva, gently towards the vulva from the other direction. No pressure at all on this blade. I'm just, I'm not even touching her skin really. I'm just kind of grazing it off. Cleaning up around the anus, all four directions. just to keep it clean. She has a docked tail. I like to always take the docked tails with a 10 underneath to keep all that clean. And now we're gonna switch over to a 30. Gently hold up her little back foot. We're only taking off everything that she would be standing on. Gently in a V shape in this large pad, like that. Yes, good sweet tea, yes, yes. Good, what a good girl. V shape here. I'm gonna be using this Kenchi Five Star. I think it's a six inch shear. It's curved. And this is my Jody Murphy. It's another small blending shear. We're blending in an inverted V shape here, right in front of the eyes. This keeps the buildup at bay and keeps their eyes cleaner and they can see better. If you're new to using shears and blending shears, you may just want to go for a 10 blade in that area and gently clean out the corner of the eyes. Now we're going to set the visor here. So I'm combing everything forward and on a little bit of a curved C shape angle coming around the side of the eye. I'm curving that visor back towards the ear. This will give her a happy expression. Believe it or not, it does make a difference. We're going to round the ears and shape them right into the, the dome on the top of her head so that it all looks like one little headpiece. For the side of the head, we're going to comb everything down, rounding the hair towards the ear and following the jawline. All the shapes that we're trying to create with this groom are round, soft, and fluffy. For the muzzle, we're going to comb everything down and forward, and we're going to kind of use the nose as the longest point of the head. So we're going to trim everything back towards the ear on an angle to shorten up the length of her muzzle. Same thing on the other side of the head, using the jaw line as our shape guide, lifting the hair with your comb and rounding it back towards the front of the ear. Continue rounding up the side of the top skull and bringing those shapes together. We're rounding this head and we want to see round. And don't forget, we're using the other side that we already finished as our guide. This tells us how to line up the opposite side of the head. Just watch how this all comes together. Now we're going to finish the body, legs, feet, and tail. Our clipper work will leave straggling hairs, so now it's time to tidy everything up. 
keeping the foot on the table and scissoring around the bottom of the foot to match the length of the leg hair because remember we've set the length of the hair that we want we're now just tying it together aligning with our clipper work for the tail, flatten the tail between your finger and your thumb and push the hair out towards the end of the tail so you can just simply round it and outline it with your shears. If your dog has a full tail, then simply just shape it right around the base of the tail and let it plume from there. On the side of your dog's leg where the body hair meets the leg hair, you're going to need to tidy that up too. We're going to create a dome shape on top of the foot, leaving the same hair length as on the legs. Continuously lift the hair with your comb and scissor off anything that is sticking out. It's that simple. We're just shaping the outline. We're definitely going to need to do some tidying up work right here around the rear. I have my finger protecting the dog's vulva. If she was an intact male, I would be doing the same thing. I'm purposely showing you different camera angles because I want you to be taking different looks, different views of your dog as you're trimming them and not just standing beside them. Stand behind them. Stand in front of them. You'll see different things that you need to shape in while we're creating this soft plush outline on our teddy bear trim. Round feet, round head, soft body. Even as a beginner, I want you to understand that there is minimal scissor work to every trim, especially the teddy bear trim. Move the foot to see how it bends, how the hair will bend, and it'll tell you what you need to trim off. You do need to move your dog around, pick the leg up, see what hair pops out. Bring the head up, bring the head down, see how the hair moves when you move your dog. And this will show you how to outline your teddy bear trim. Here's an important tip for feet. I like to keep the foot on the table as much as possible. It eliminates the chance of me nicking a dog pad. And on the flip side, I do have to pick the leg up when I want to shape the inner thigh, bring it around to the front of the leg, tie it together with the back of the leg. You just have to move your dog around but try to keep those feet on the table when you're trimming them it's safer guys so here's your homework question have you noticed all the different ways I hold the dog's feet their head their body while I'm trimming it look how I'm holding her front paw right now have you noticed how I utilize my other hand it's so important now I'm gonna get sweet tea down off the table and we're gonna watch her movement. I'm going to look at my work. Evaluate your work when you get your dog down off the table. Maybe you might have a little more snipping to do, but that's gonna tell you when you watch your dog walk, you watch them move. It's gonna show you how your work looks. And here's the last cookie of the video. Sweet tea is a purebred toy schnauzer. How about that? Hey, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe on your way out and I will see you in the next one.